What's your favourite song? Um, I have lots of favourite songs. Um, some of them stick with me, some of them change over time. Does yours change over time? Um, what songs are you listening to at the moment? Once, what songs speak to you most about who God is and your relationship with him? What songs do you want to sing over and over again? What songs do you hear the first note of and know exactly what is coming? What songs help you to meet with God? When we come to Psalm 19, it's beautiful, isn't it? We read it and we can't help but look up at whatever the sky is doing now and see something of the glory of God. I mean, I look up the sky now and they're just the clouds and the shapes of the clouds and the blue sky um, and the sunshine that is somewhere and is shining on the cars opposite my house. Um, I see in all of that, I see something of the glory of God. When we read Psalm 19, it makes us pause and contemplate the vastness and the might of God's creation. And therefore, God himself, who has spoken, who is spoken of as we listen to the song of creation, this song from above, for this song from the heavens, from the sky. C.S. Lewis said of Psalm 19, I take this to be the greatest poem in the Psalter and one of the greatest lyrics in the world. What do you think? What do you think to the words of this song? Do you think it's one of the greatest? Well, whatever we think, it is great um, and it's just amazing. But when we start to read it a bit more deeply, we might recognise those first few verses, but we find as we keep reading it, it feels like um, it goes into another psalm. So you've got this psalm about creation and then you've got a psalm about the law. But here they are, they're sat together and there must be a reason for that. And we're going to think about that a little bit um, and how one speaks into the other. It sits together um, deliberately, this idea of the relationship between creation and the law, the song of creation and the song of the law. We see the revelation of God in creation and then in the law and then in our response to that. It's a psalm that speaks of the journey of faith because first we acknowledge that God is there. We see something of his ways and we do that as we look at the heavens, as we look at the world around us. And as we acknowledge God is there and we learn more about that, that prompts us to learn more deeply God's ways, which is what we do with the law, with scripture. And then as we begin to understand what it says in scripture, God's redemption plan as revealed through in there, we begin to recognise God as our redeemer. So creation song takes us on a journey to following Jesus. This is one song. It's like three verses or two, two verses and a, and a final chorus that takes us on a journey to following Jesus. So let's look at that journey and let's start at the beginning. Start at the beginning in verse 1 where creation speaks for itself of the wonders of God. As we just stop and have a look at the world around us. Whenever we ask one another, whenever I ask what most inspires you, there are two things that keep come up about the things that are keeping us going in this time. First one is songs and scripture. So um, there are songs that we're listening to over and over again that remind us that God keeps his promises, that God is our shield, that God is our redeemer. And the second one is looking at the world around us. There have been so many photos that we've shared of rainbows and sky and trees and flowers and the animals around us. How many times in the last few months have you needed to find peace and then you've just paused just to be with creation. There's been some amazing growing going on in our community. Some of the flowers that people are growing, some of the vegetables, actually those things have kept us going as we carry on that act of creation. Now on Friday, I even did some gardening, which is some kind of miracle. I dug up a flower bed 
ready to um, plant some plants when I finally get them. And after I'd finished doing that, I sat and I listened to the wind in the trees um, and um, I listened to the birds and um, I watched a robin come up beside me and dig up all the worms I'd dislodged in the digging. And at that moment, I felt very much at one with God. I knew that God was with me. God was with me in the bird song, in the trees, the sound of the, the leaves of the trees. God is with me um, in the smells of the world around me. When I sit on um, like that and I just stop and pause in God's creation, it's a bit like one of those thin places where heaven and earth just meet and you know that God is there. You feel God with you in that peace is found surrounded by God's creation, isn't it? How it all grows and becomes what it is, is a wonder. So, so often we look out at creation and it just makes us go, wow. Even the most adamant of non-believer goes, wow, at creation. What are the beautiful things that have made you go, wow, recently? What are the beautiful things that have made you proclaim God's goodness? What are the beautiful things that have made you just stop and listen to the song they're singing? The psalmist says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Look up, there is God. Look out the window now, there is God. Listen to the song of the heavens, God's song is sung. You cannot get away from it. It's there. The, um, Paul, um, in the New Testament, as he writes um, the, the letter to the Romans, picks up on this. And in Romans 1 verse 20, he says, people are without excuse. If you look at the world around you, the evidence of God is there. You cannot get away from it. And if you deny that, you are without excuse. God is here. God is in creation. God is our creator. And creation speaks for itself of the wonders of God, particularly as well as we understand more and more of it. So it's not just about seeing it, because the psalmist says night after night they reveal knowledge. Not only do we see God in the initial wonder, but we see God in the understanding of what um, has made that wonder. We discover more of God as we understand more of creation, we gain a knowledge of God as we understand more of his creation. As we learn how the world works, we get to know God more. It's what excites me about learning about equations and maths and all that kind of thing. Um, that as I understand more about the, the, how the world works, I know God more. The beauty of the way of creation, the way creation works, gives us an image of who God is. It's not necessarily an understanding that everyone has. Not everyone see, looks at creation and sees God and understands that as we understand more about creation, we know more of God. But creation declares just how amazing God is. He's a God of life. He's a God of regeneration. He's God, God that brings life from what is seemingly dead. If you think about a bulb when you plant it, um, about this time maybe, in spring, it will bring new life. That bulb seems dead but the flower it produces seems so much alive. He is a God of new beginnings, he's a God of rest, he's a God of beauty and of might. In creation we see the promises of God, the balance of God, the intelligence of God. Creation reveals knowledge. So as we understand how creation works, we understand more and more of God. Creation sings deep, beautiful music that tells more and more of the glory of God as we listen more intently and find out more. In creation we see God. We recognise that there is a God. God is revealed in creation. But then the psalmist moves on from this creation song to this song of the law and talks about how we learn God's ways through understanding the law. As we experience God in creation, it prompts us to know, to want to know more about him. And we do that 
through understanding his plan in scripture, his story in scripture. The psalmist talks about the law. The law is, um, is everything that God wants us to know about himself. And the song of the law, um, the psalmist says, is refreshing to the soul. It makes us wise. It gives us joy. It gives us light. It makes us pure. It helps put us in right relationship with God. So we see and hear God in creation and the next step is to understand more of who he is. And we do that through, through understanding his, his word and what he says to us in scripture. How do we respond to the wonders of creation? What do we do with what we've learned when we look at the sky? Well, we go and find out more about who the one who we've, we've learned something about. And the flow of the psalm suggests that the, the word of God, the law has a big dimension that reaches out to all of creation. Just as the sun shines light on all creation, so does the law. We understand creation by understanding God's story. The wonders of God can be seen throughout scripture. Just as we look at the skies and see the wonders of God, we see the wonders of God in scripture. And it's through knowing more of God and understanding what he has done, which is what we do through the law, that our lives are made right. It gives us direction for living. Creation is part of the provision for full living and the law explains that. In the order of creation we see God's care for the world. In the law we see how God has passed on that provision of care to us. So we move on in the journey. We recognise that God is creator we learn about what God has done in scripture and then there is a call to respond to that. We move on, the, on on the journey. We know of God, we learn more of God, we respond. We recognise him and accept him as our redeemer. The evidence is there, do we choose to accept it and where do we go with this next? When we choose to follow Jesus, we are um, called to a life that is different to the world around us. And there is a response in that. And part of that response um, to the ways of God um, is a responsibility towards the bigger picture. We point to the kingdom and we look for places where we can bring God's kingdom on earth today. But we don't always do that well when it comes to the bigger picture of creation. We don't always do that well when we when we miss going back to our creator's mandate for us on, um, in, in our creation in Genesis. We don't always do that in the way we care for creation. The psalmist um, asks for forgiveness for their faults and, and so should we. God created us, yet so often we don't have respect for him or his creation. The evidence is all there. It's been there since the beginning. The one thing that humanity was asked not to do, they did. We're rebellious. They ate from that tree and they were told not to. Now one of the roles in creation was for human beings to be good stewards of creation, but we haven't been. I mean, this virus is evidence of that. Um, this, this pandemic has come because of a series of actions going right back to the Garden of Eden um, that has caused this world to be more broken and broken and broken some more. So as we ask for forgiveness, we, we need to take some personal responsibility for this. We need to listen to the song of the heavens and the law and then choose because of that to live in a different way. Live in a way that speaks of the restoration that Jesus brings. Not just for individuals, but for the whole world. The whole world has fallen. So actually, we need to be speaking restoration into it all. As we are forgiven for when we've got it wrong, let us live as if we were forgiven and choose to live differently. But how do we do that? Well, we go back to the beginning of the psalm and just see how it builds up. Um, there is a call for a response to creation, to our creator God and what he's done. The psalm is all about the wonders of creation, but often we see that creation isn't full of wonders, it's full of brokenness. 
The psalm is about what we can learn about God through those wonders, but we can also learn something about our response through how those things um, are broken. And the psalmist talks about what we can do in response to all of this mess that has been caused by the actions of human beings. God gave us a task as human beings in creation to be good stewards. However, in the Western world in particular, we're more like to exploit nature for human convenience rather than steward it well. And when we ask for forgiveness, we must not forget to ask for forgiveness for the way we've treated the world that we wonder at. How can we be better stewards of creation? Well, rather than deny the warnings of scientists on climate change and plastic pollution and all those things, because um, it's easier to do that, rather than ignore those warnings, we need to listen. Rather than blame the protesters on climate change for some of the stuff that's happened, we need to listen to what they're saying. And our science and our faith complements one another each this because our science tells us there is something wrong, but actually we know there is something wrong because people have turned away from God. So what can we do to sort this out? We work together with scientists who have got some things in place that we can do this. As stewards of God's creation, we need to think about how our actions are affecting the future of the world and are affecting the world today. The response to this virus, I feel like it's distracted us from some of the good work that we were doing um, in making this world a better place. It's, we're, we're so focused on looking after ourselves, we've forgotten that we're not looking after the world. But actually, the virus um, and what's happened with that has highlighted the need to work with creation, not against it. Creation, people have talked about how this is the, this is the world fighting back for what we've done. It's a strange way of putting it, but actually um, there is something about the way that we've cared um, for one another or not and cared for creation or not um, that has caused this disease to be able to spread. So we have a responsibility to look to God first as we look after his creation, not as we please, but as God requires. We created be, to be part of creation, not independent from it, work from it, not against it, work with it, not against it. Because the broken relationship with God led not only to humanity's fall, but to creation's fall too. It's in the decisions we make that we can point to the kingdom. It's in the decisions we make we can make this world a better place. As we make environmental decisions, we can begin to bring some kind of restoration. We may believe that our actions make no difference when world leaders are not taking necessary actions, when other countries are not taking necessary actions. However, we do know that our actions make a difference. One act of random kindness at a time, we say. How about one act of random kindness to creation? How about responding to that song of creation by giving something back? Even in this chaotic time, we can do this. We can ensure that our homes and appliances and cars are as energy efficient as, as, energy efficient as we possibly can. We can dry clothes outside rather than in the dryer. We can work with creation and not against it. We can think about where our electricity comes from and we can shop responsibly. We can think about what we're doing with our masks and our plastic gloves. Use masks that you can wash because you're not meant to be using the medical grade ones anyway. So use masks that you can wash and don't use plastic gloves if you don't need to and dispose of them in the right way. I'm sick to, I'm just sick of seeing plastic gloves and masks lying all over the place. What are people doing? We can work from home where we can, and maybe this is a, this, a good thing to come from this virus, is that people will do that so there'll be less pollution. We can walk to places where we can so we're not using our cars as much. I need to do that. We can become better informed about the issues that are behind why the world the way it is the way it is and not ignore them. We can think about food waste and packaging and recycle as much as we can. We know that one day that creation will be restored and this song will be an even bigger song. We know that Jesus is coming again and at that point creation will be restored and the songs will be magnificent. But just as we're called to be pointers to the kingdom through the way we serve others, 
and care for them. I believe we are to be pointers to the kingdom through our stewardship of this world that God has entrusted to us. As creation sings to us, as the, the heavens declare the glory of God, sing back a song of love through the way you care for it. Take heed from the psalmist who looked to the world and saw God and grew in the knowledge of God, which prompted him to learn more of God, which prompted him to respond by asking for forgiveness and looking for redemption, asking that the words of his mouth and the meditations of his heart might be pleasing in God's sight. May the way we respond to God's creation be ultimately pleasing to him. The way we respond to the song creation is singing be ultimately pleasing to him. As songs come from above, may the songs that return be full of beauty and care and compassion. All creation is a song. Let's sing its song as we pray. Let's pray together. Father God, you formed us from the dust of the earth and placed us in the garden. Remind us of our place as your creatures at home in your creation. Forgive us when we forget our connection to the earth and our dependence upon the goodness of your world. Lord, have mercy. Our Saviour Jesus Christ, you were born into this world and you made your earthly home in Nazareth and came to know and love the people and places where you were, you were living. Pray, Lord, that you will help us to know and love the people and places where you have set us. Forgive us when we forget our connection to the earth and our dependence upon the goodness of your world. Lord, have mercy. As we live through this pandemic, let us not forget your call on us to care for your creation. Let us not be distracted so much in caring for ourselves that we miss the bigger picture. Help us to remember to think about how our actions affect your world. Help us to be responsible stewards of your world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we thank you that you forgive our sins, that you bring us peace, that you help us bear fruit for your kingdom. And we give you glory. We sing you songs of praise as we listen to the song of your creation. Amen.